Hi everyone, welcome back. As uh, my regular followers know, in the last few videos, we talked about optimization using genetic algorithms. And I got a few requests asking about uh, other types of metaheuristic algorithms like simulated annealing and particles form optimization. So I plan on taking the next few videos talking about exactly those. Providing a good introduction so you know exactly what they mean and how to use them and if you want to be notified of those you know what to do hit the subscribe button and while you're there find the little thanks if you're feeling extra generous okay getting back to this topic this video there is no coding here i just want to make sure you understand exactly what the basics of these three meta heuristic algorithms are you probably know everything about genetic algorithm assuming you watched my last few videos now let's go ahead and start by understanding what these meta heuristic algorithms are and again like i said starting next video it would be actually some sort of a coding involved so you understand you get hands-on experience now meta heuristic what what does it mean <clears throat> these are optimization techniques where iterative search is performed to explore a nice solution space Right, you may be searching for a minimum or a maximum in the solution space, and metaheuristic algorithms is basically uh, provides a framework for iterative search. Now, they do not guarantee finding like a global minimum, global maximum, but they are an efficient, they provide an efficient way to explore the search space. And of course, they, they are using heuristic approaches, heuristic rules. What in the world is that? <laughs> Look up the dictionary, it's basically proceeding to a solution by trial and error. So you have a specific approach depending on the algorithm, and then you just do trial and error, and then you look at your optimization, or you quantify the optimization using objective function, for example, and you say, okay, this is not better than my last time, so let me go back and then do something else. So you kind of explore the solution space and you find the maximum or minimum. So this is basically what heuristic algorithms actually do. And genetic algorithms, simulated annealing, particle swarm, the three topics that I'm gonna summarize in this tutorial, they are the three examples of these metaheuristic examples and they're quite widely used uh, when it comes to metaheuristic examples. So uh, you may as well know about them. <clears throat> Now, I'll quickly summarize genetic algorithms, even though I talked about them in the last few videos. They are optimization technique, obviously, and they mimic the process of natural selection. And we looked at how the evolution happens. You know, these solutions are uh, typically represented by some sort of a binary code, and then you combine them and uh, you mutate them and so on. So this is kind of following a uh, natural process and once you do that they evaluate the fitness of each of these so you have a population if you look at the graphic on the right hand side you have a population and then you kind of pick the ones that are fit <clears throat> how do you assess the fitness well you randomly select a whole bunch let's say a subset of uh, the population and then you uh, you you kind of check the fitness using the objective function and then you perform your selection hey here are my top two parents and then you perform crossover, meaning randomly take like some of these <clears throat> uh, elements or digits from each of the binary codes and then uh, mix them and create new children. And in the children, go ahead and do some mutation, meaning randomly change certain values and go ahead and check the fitness and so on. And do this iteratively until certain iterations are reached, until you reach some other criteria. So that's basically what genetic algorithm is. And again, I talked about this in the last few videos. And where are they useful? They can be useful in many variables, constraints, like if you have scheduling, routing, design optimization, these can be very good approaches. And I always look at how they can be used for image processing, image analysis. I haven't personally used genetic algorithms uh, or found the need to use genetic algorithms for image processing, but I looked at some quick literature survey and it's like apparently some people experimented with image segmentation. Feature selection is a good, good uh, example where genetic algorithms can be very useful. And it has been used there and object recognition, although I tend to use more deep learning approaches when it comes to object recognition and image segmentation. 
Now, moving on to simulated annealing, and those of you who come from material sciences, metallurgical background, you know what annealing is. It's basically a slow cooling of a metal or an alloy, so you get a nice crystalline structure with a minimum energy state, right? So the slower the cooling rate, the larger the grains uh, are, and so on. So basically, annealing refers to slow cooling. So you get the desired properties to the material. So that's exactly what we are trying to do. It iteratively adjusting the temperature of the system. You must be wondering what in the world is temperature. I'll explain that in a second. But accepting and rejecting candidate solutions. Uh, so if you look at the top right uh, graphic over there, if the delta is less than some value, that means if the change from previous to right now is less than something, you know, zero, that means we are heading in the right direction, then go ahead and accept the solution. But if it's not, meaning if I don't have a optimal solution compared to the last iteration, should we just reject it? Well, that's exactly where the temperature fits in. It says, hey, don't reject it, but see what the probability is for that solution to be accepted. Meaning if the temperature is very high, then uh, the algorithm accepts solutions with worse fitness. Even though it's worse, it just accepts it because that allows us to explore the search space. <clears throat> yeah, uh, That way you're not stuck in the local minima. You get out and you explore the search space more. And that happens at high temperatures, right? But you schedule the temperature. As the iterations go by, you decrease the temperature. So as the temperature uh, decreases, and of course, how do you change the temperature? You kind of uh, schedule a temperature. Like you can decrease it by a specific amount every iteration. Now, <clears throat> it's, uh, and and uh, yeah, uh, basically that's pretty much it. I'll talk more about this once we get to each of these topics, but at a high level, I want you to understand what's going on. So you have an objective function, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, iterating through these different values, and now you say, okay, compared to the previous, right now, I have, uh, you know, better result. That means go ahead and accept it. Or this time I have a worse result. Instead of just rejecting it, you're saying, okay, there is a tiny probability that this may be possible. So with that probability, and how is that probability defined? It's just defined by uh, e to the minus delta over t. And t is the temperature. And this is the equation for annealing in general, right? The slow cooling. Okay, now uh, simulated anne annealing, what is it well suited for? If you have large search space with a mini local optima, like minima or maxima, whatever the uh, local optima is, then in such a uh, problems, then this can be a preferred choice. <clears throat> image analysis, again, uh, you can use these for image registration uh, between uh, images, object tracking, texture synthesis in microscopy images. I do not have, again, firsthand experience doing any of these, but I'll see if I can explore some of these and uh, and and if it if I get better results or faster results or whatever if I think something is better than existing state of the art uh, well when I say state of the art <laughs> I mean the existing tools that we use today currently then I'll probably consider doing another video on this topic now moving on to particle swarm optimization as the name suggests it's about particle swarm well what is a swarm. Uh, Swarm intelligence, if you look at the behavior of uh, flocks of birds or a whole school of fish, you know, do you ever wonder, like, why are they moving the way they are moving? How are they communicating? So based on that, we can actually come up with an algorithm. That's exactly what particle swarm optimization is. And it creates a bunch of particles. Think of them as birds, for example. And each of these representing a candidate solution and they move through the solution space, okay? And how fast do they move? Every bird, every individual solution, they have their own velocity. They move at different velocities. And this bird may find the seed first, which means a single particle may be the right solution first. Maybe there is another solution found by some other bird or some other point in our example. Right? So there are two components here. One is my self-conscious component. I am like aware of myself. Hey, I'm here. I found the best you know, food here. But then once I know about what else is going on, I'll also understand the social behavior, which means, hey, someone else found even better food. So maybe that is the better solution. 
So there are these two components. Again, I'm going to talk about particle, particle swarm optimization when we get there in a couple of videos from now, but this is the thought process that goes behind it. Okay. <clears throat> we'll see how we code it algorithmically later on, but that's the idea here. Now, uh, the algorithm updates the positions, velocities based on the fitness. So everything has a fitness function, objective function, you can call that. Yeah, you look at the current solution and the local and global best solution. This is what I was just explaining. Hey, I found the local solution, which is my own solution. I found this amazing food here, but then I, I, I send a message to my friends and they're like, hey, I found this thing somewhere uh, at some other place. I'm like, oh, that's better than my solution, right? So that is the best one. So you got two components, local and global solutions. And the third component is velocity the speed at which I'm doing my search to find my solution, the speed at which these are traveling to find the best solution. So that's the third component. Okay, now it's uh, suitable for solving nonlinear, dynamic optimization, machine learning, signal processing. There are various applications. Again, uh, depends on exactly what type of optimization you're looking for. But yeah, the, you have three algorithms, genetic, uh, simulated annealing, and PSO and uh, uh, to test. Now on your optimization problems. Uh, and it has been used for feature selection, image segmentation, classification in microscopy images. But again, when it comes to segmentation and classification, I tend to rely on deep learning. And apparently deep learning is replacing everything that we know of, like the traditional algorithms, but still optimization, uh, you know, like feature selection or any other engineering problems, you know, this may be uh, you should consider this. And again, I'll do I'll do a steel strength analysis using all of these. I have already done that using genetic algorithm, but let's do exactly the same uh, problem using the other two approaches. Okay, I think that's uh, what I plan on actually communicating with you, but just to end this whole discussion before we jump on to the next video and talk about uh, coding or simulated annealing, one final summary. So genetic algorithms, simulated annealing and PSO, as we discussed, they're all metaheuristic algorithms. They can explore the search space and they can find the good solutions to optimization problems. But obviously the details are different in terms of how exactly they, they, they work. As you know, genetic algorithms, they, they, we already talked about it. I mean, it, it, it simulates the natural uh, behavior, natural uh, uh, genetic, uh, you know, how genes actually work, but uh, they're good at handling complex problems, many, especially where you have many variables and constraints. Yeah. And simulated annealing is well suited for uh, finding the global optimum. Again, if you have large search space, think of simulated uh, annealing. If you have many variables, think of genetic algorithms. And if you have nonlinear dynamic optimization problems, think of particles form. But uh, there is a huge overlap between what they can do, obviously, but then they are good. Some of, sometimes one is better than the other. That's the summary here. And of course, it depends on the degree, uh, given problem. And this is the challenge that everyone, even the most experienced, uh, uh, you know, I don't know who, what to call. I mean, these are, these are algorithm engineers, I should say. The most experienced ones also can tell you, hey, use this. This is going to be great. Yeah. So it remains a challenge. Basically, which one is right for you remains a challenge. That's why you need to know what they are so you can use them. Using them is pretty simple and easy. Okay, so with that, let me go ahead and end this tutorial and let's go ahead and continue the discussion in the next uh, video where I'm going to uh, talk about, uh, focus a bit more on the simulated annealing and it involves some coding. Thank you and do not forget to hit the subscribe button.